Hello there, Chef D. Malfi here. You may not recognize me because I have a new hairstyle. And welcome to Plant Face Made Easy. I'm giving you fringe today, peeps. I'm very excited to be here because I'm hungry and I'm ready for a quick, easy, and delicious lunch. These are three pillars that I can guarantee you will get from all of the recipes out of my monthly Plant Face Made Easy cookbook. That's this right here. I write a new cookbook every month. And these recipes are super fun. They're simple, they're nutrient dense, and today's no exception. We are going to be making cheesy broccoli soup. I am so excited for this. We got a request because we have a lot of requests coming in now for different foods, different recipes, different classic comfort foods that I can like plant basify. So today we're doing just that with a cheesy broccoli soup. It's going to be amazing. And oh, thank you so much. If you want to give me some love on my a show or my bangs, go ahead and do that. <laughs> Please tell me that you're here and where you're watching. Uh, I would love to engage with you. If you have any questions about these recipes, plant-based eating or living, pop them in the comment box and I would will get to it as soon as I can. And you guys, if you haven't downloaded the November cookbook yet, do that right now. There's a link in the comment box. You can download it and you can actually follow along with me. So let's get into this cheesy broccoli soup, yeah? So yummy. I love broccoli soup. I'm a cheesy broccoli soup fan. I don't make it often because generally it can be very rich, right? I wanted to make this recipe lighter and just easier in general so you can make it from start to finish in probably less than half an hour. So let's get into it. I need some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna grab that here. And I'm just gonna use a few tablespoons right into my stock pot. Now I'm gonna do an overhead cam so that you can follow along with me. And I have my stock pot right here. I'm gonna move my tea. There we go. So two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. That's probably just enough, maybe just a little bit more. If you are whole food plant-based and you don't do oil, that's okay. You can leave this out. You can actually just take your diced onion, and I'm gonna use a yellow onion for this, and you can throw it right into a hot stock pot with nothing. Just let it go. You can add a little bit of your favorite salt substitute if you are salt-free as well. I'm not though, so I'm gonna use a little regular sea salt here, which I have and I love. And the salt will actually remove um, a little bit of the water, the natural water from the onions. So if you're a whole food plant-based and you don't do oil, um, but you have a salt substitute or you do salt, add that and you'll release the natural water in the pot. So I'm gonna use a heat resistant spatula here and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a mix. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joanne. Hi, Sharice, how's Chicago? Shy town is it snowing yet? Kathy, I'm so glad that you're here. Hi, Renee and Diane. Oh, thank you so much for the hair. Love you guys. I, I'm gonna have to grow into this style, but I'm, I'm excited for it. Something different, I needed something different. Now that we wear masks all the time, I had to do something to the upper face, all right? So that's what we're going with. This is Tina, by the way. I named my hair a while ago. Do you name your hair? Okay, if you don't name your hair, you need to name your hair today. Do it, get into it. Even if you're a guy, name your hair. Danny, do you name your hair? <laughs> Gerald, is that right? Okay, there we go. Um, can we find a sexier name? I don't know about Gerald. All right, no, d d don't get distracted. Stay focused, stay Rico focused. Suave. Rico Suave, he says. Okay, I like it. All right, so I am just mixing up the onions and I'm just enjoying it. I'm giving myself an onion facial. I'm really getting into it. You guys, don't worry about cooking these too high. I don't want to burn the onion. I don't wanna even add very much color to the onion at all because that tends to make it just a bit bitter and it's going to add color. Now, the whole thing about this soup is that we want it to be um, kind of beautiful, kind of like a, a brownish, greenish color, like cheesy broccoli, right? And if this gets a little bit burnt or too brown around the edges, it's going to make the soup darker. So just be careful about that and you wanna just give it a mix, give it some love every few seconds, just like I'm doing here. All right, the next thing that we wanna add is another aromatic. I'm gonna use two cloves of garlic. Now I have two cloves of garlic, one's big, one's small. Any two cloves will work. I'm gonna use fresh garlic, but you can use frozen. Let me show you. If you've never seen frozen garlic, it looks just like this. This is frozen garlic. It comes inside of cubes like this. Each cube is equal to one clove, but today I'm going fresh. If you want that though, you can find it in the freezer section. And here's how I whack open my the skin of my garlic. I take a chef's knife, place it down on the cutting board, and I literally just give it a whack 
I'm gonna do it the other side. You can do this with a mallet too. My uh, stepmom Rosie gave me this trick. You can do it with a mallet and it works this exact same way. And what you'll see is like the skin kind of just pops right off of the clove. And so this is great because this is gonna make it super easy to just remove the skin without having to kind of peel it apart. You know, sometimes the, the garlic gets stuck and I don't want that. Take it all, all the skin off, the peel, the wrapper, the paper, whatever you call it. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Invincible Daydreamer, I'm glad that you're back. How's Trinidad today? Good? What's the weather like there? I'm so curious. All right, so look at these, check these out. These are my new knives. Well, I shouldn't say new, I've had them for a while, about a year and a half. These are Chef's Vision knives. These are actual photographs taken from the galaxy. And I have every single color of the rainbow. You'll see I have my knives up here. Check them out, you guys. If you wanna check those out, you can uh, shop in my new Amazon online shop at Chef D. Malfi on Amazon. I am so grateful to be an Amazon influencer. Thank you so much, Amazon, if you're watching. I doubt you're watching, but if you are, hey, if you are, I just wanna give you some love. I'm going to take this garlic clove now and I'm gonna mash it and I'm going to add it right to my pot and then give this a mix. Oops, got some onions popped right out. Let me grab all that. All right, so I can, I'm gonna come back to an over, a complete overhead of the soup pot. Okay, cool. And to this, I'm now going to talk about the other ingredients. I'm gonna continue to mix this up as I add ingredients. So every few seconds, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and, and add and mix and mix and mix. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, next thing I'm gonna add are some shredded carrots. Now I'm gonna use these pre-shredded carrots because it's just easier for me, right? I didn't wanna worry about shredding them myself. I need a cup and a half or so. That's gonna go right in. Give this a good, a good mix. And we're just layering the flavor here. You know what they say, and by they, I mean me. You know what I say about layering flavor? Every single time I add a new thing to the pot, I need to season it with a little bit more sea salt, all right? And I'm doing this because by doing this, I'm actually layering the flavor. So I'm creating a really ni nice and dynamic flavor profile. And it's just a little salt on each layer goes a long way. All right, the next thing that I want are some broccoli florets. Now I'm gonna use organic broccoli here, which I have. And I've washed this already. I have kept it with the rubber band. This rubber band's really great. It's great for a lot of things. I use it for travel, these thick rubber bands that say organic broccoli, keep those. And what I'm going to do is I've washed this, yeah? I'm now just going to take it and I'm going to just make florets out of it. Let me clear the deck so just to make this a little easier for myself. And I want to keep the stock as well, but right now I'm going to focus on the florets. And now I really want this to cook quickly, right? Because this is plant-based made easy. We want to keep this as simple as possible. So I want to just throw my, run my knife around the, uh, the florets or over the florets until they're nice and chopped. You could use cauliflower if you wanted to, which is fantastic, but I really love the traditional kind of cheesy broccoli flavor. It's so yum. Okay, the florets are gonna go right in. I'm gonna probably get about four cups for one head of broccoli, which is what we're aiming for. Little more, little less is just fine. Make it simple for yourself, whatever you have. Now, let's say you don't have enough. What you can do is actually use the stock. So let me just clean my hands up for a second here. All right, so I have these stalks. Now these are great. What you can see is I've already chopped the top part off. So you can see these are nice and um, cut. They're, they're cut down so there's no dry bits on the ends. I would save these and here's what I would do. I would take the rubber band off and I would literally saute these in a, in a pan, in like a saute pan with some plant-based butter, maybe some brown butter and just baste these and saute them in brown butter. And you can have a delicious kind of like broccoli stock steak. It's really nice. It's kind of like eating kind of like a tenderloin or filet, but like a tenderloin, um, you know, like Chateaubriand. Like that's what I used to eat a lot when I was eating beef back in the Dizay. <laughs> and instead I'm gonna use broccoli stocks. I'm laughing because it's like, wow, I've come a long way from high quality beef to organic broccoli. I'm feeling great. All right, so, but for now, <laughs> what do you say? It's a, it's a step up. I think it's a step up. That's for sure. If you don't have enough broccoli florets, go ahead and use some of this stock. Because it's super thick, just slice it thin. 
And this is super great for you. Even more nutrient dense in the stock than I would say in the florets or maybe equal. But I'm just gonna add a few and then give this a nice mix. Now I've added a layer of flavor. What are we gonna do? We are going to season it with salt and pepper. We aren't gonna forget that. We're gonna try to remember if we can salt and pepper. I know I haven't added pepper uh, to the other layers, but I'm going for it now. I don't wanna over pepper it. So definitely salt. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Perfect. And I wanna make sure this is mixed up and then we will cover it and let this steam. I think we have a comment here, let's see. <laughs> All right, Amy Quinn, oh my gosh, Amy, thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful to give you these wonderful recipes and I'm glad that you're finding value in the content. So keep watching, stay tuned for all of the rest that I have in store for you for November. You guys, if you haven't checked out the November menu for this entire month, check it out. You can see that by actually um, viewing, going on my Facebook page and, and scrolling down until you see the November menu and it will be, and go into the Facebook group, Plant Based Made Easy. It is definitely there as well. There's a couple places where you can see it and the menu is always on, in the book as well. And there's just, I'm very into November. I'm like, you know, I'm super bored, right? Because I'm not, I'm bored in, in my home. And so I'm, I'm channeling all of my energy into this show. <laughs> Thank goodness I have this. I'm so grateful for it. And so check out that menu because there's a lot in store for you. Cool. Okay, this is nice. I'm just gonna make sure I have everything that I need. I do, I have the carrots, the broccoli, the garlic, the onion. I've got a little EVOO just to make sure it doesn't stick. Now the last thing that I need is a little stock because at this point I really want it to steam. So I'm gonna use hearty vegetable broth or stock, it doesn't matter. There's truly no difference when you don't make it with bones. And I'm going to use two cups here of the vegetable stock and I'm going to measure it out so that I don't have a watery soup. I don't wanna eyeball this. One, uh-oh, my bangs got wet with stock. Oh, I can't do that, my bangs can't get wet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so add those two cups, cool. Now I'm going to cover this and I'm gonna let it steam while we make the cheesy sauce, okay? So this is gonna steam, I'm gonna pump up the heat so it's really nice and high because really all we need at this point is for the broccoli to get nice and tender, the carrots to get nice and tender and everything kind of to be ready uh, for the blender. Ooh, now I rhyme, I'm a poet. Okay, now let's make a cheesy sauce. It's so easy. What'd you say? Okay, more jokes are coming later. Danny has a lot to say today. All right, so let's get into the cheesy sauce. First things first, you have to do this ahead of time. You wanna soak a cup of cashews in a glass container with about a cup of water, okay? So I did that, you need to soak this for at least four hours. I'm showing you four, but the longer the better. I've done this overnight. So right before you go to sleep, Make sure you have your, your nuts soaked. <laughs> oh man, I wish it was, I wish it was a joke, but truly I wake up about 10 minutes after I go to sleep almost every night thinking, did I soak my nuts for whatever the next recipe is? Okay, so soak your nuts. <laughs> it can be for yogurt, it can be for cheese sauce, it can be for almond milk, it can be for nut milk of any kind. Just make sure you have your soaking going on while you go to sleep and then for that nice eight hours you're really getting a nice kind of soft nut or a seed in my case i'm using cashews so then you want to drain them and what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these ingredients to a blender so i'm going to add the kosh the cashews the water a little mustard powder smoked paprika nutritional yeast lemon juice plant milk and cayenne pepper so here we go that's my one cup of cashews and if you have a high speed blender now's the time to use it I don't have a high-speed blender in my studio here. I just have a regular blender. So we're going to probably have to blend this for a little longer. All right, so that's that. I want one cup of water. Let's see if I have it here, please. Yes, I do. Water ready. Cold filter water. Make sure it's filtered so you have a nice clean taste. You've gone, come this far, right? You've done all the soaking. You've done all the sauteing. You've steamed the vegetables. Everything's working hard. Keep it nice, as Thomas Keller says. Keep it nice. All right, the next thing that we want is a little mustard powder. I'm gonna use a half a teaspoon of this, and I'm using Coleman's mustard powder, but you can use anything. Um, I love mustard powder, it has a wonderful flavor. And I'm gonna use one half of a teaspoon, and I'm just really gonna keep it pretty level. There we go. I'm also gonna use a little smoked paprika, and this is gonna add a nice smoky quality 
um, kind of like if you had some bacon in it. It's gonna add a nice smoky quality, so half a cup. I mean, no, not a half a cup, half a teaspoon, my goodness. All right, the next thing I want is a little nutritional yeast. I'm gonna use a half a cup of nutritional yeast, which I have here. Oh, there we go, that's the camera we're working with. And let me grab a quarter of a cup, and I'm using regular nutritional yeast, doesn't matter, large flake, small flake, don't matter. I'm gonna use half a cup, so one half, one quarter of a cup and another quarter of a cup. If you've never used nutritional yeast, it's awesome. It's like really like cheesy, kind of almost like dry Parmesan, it's fantastic. I use it on a lot of different stuff. My favorite way to use it is cheese sauce and on top of popcorn, yum, my favorite. All right, the next thing I need is a little cayenne pepper. This is for heat. <laughs> nutritional yeast dust, oh boy. All right, now I want a little cayenne. I want one eighth of a teaspoon. So half of a quarter teaspoon, perfect. And then of course I want some salt and I want some pepper. So I'm gonna do that now as well so I do not forget. I'm doing an eighth or a quarter, uh, one fourth, it doesn't matter, of a teaspoon. And then some freshly ground black pepper, perfect. Yeah, let's do a question. Renee says, what is nutritional yeast? Great question. I got this question a few times over the last week. What it is is actual yeast that is cultivated. It's actually grown for the nutritional value. It is the only food that we actually grow for nutritional value alone. And it's kind of cool. It is very different than baker's yeast. Baker's yeast is just one thing. It's yeast that literally loves sugar. That is different than nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is actually grown for B vitamins, specifically vitamin B12. That's what you're gonna get mostly in uh, nutritional yeast. And it's wonderful, it's actually, um, it's uh, perfect for, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm about to say a joke. It's perfect for hippies, okay? I'm just gonna say it. It's perfect for vegans and hippies because most hippies are vegans and they are deficient in B vitamins. So if you just want me to cut to the chase, I'm just gonna say hippies love the, the nooch, all right? It's called nooch. That's the like, trendy term. And truly all it is is a blast of vitamin B12. It's really good for you. If you have a tablespoon of nutritional yeast a day, you are gonna have more than your, da more than your daily and weekly recommended amount and you can't overdo it. So enjoy it in abundance. Enjoy your nutritional yeast. Hope that answers your question. I don't really know actually how it's made, like how they do it in the in the the yeast uh, farm, but I think it's probably pretty cool. So I should study that. All right, the next thing that I want to add to my blender here is a little lemon juice. I'm going to add a tablespoon, and this lemon it's very juicy. It's going to give it a little. I'm gonna roll it a bit on my cutting board. You just saw me do that. Now I'm going to just juice it. I want about a tablespoon in here. That's fine. All right, the next thing that I want is a little plant milk. So I'm gonna use one quarter of a cup. You guys, I made this yesterday on the show. It was really fun to make it for you when I made my pumpkin smoothie. If you didn't check out that recipe, you have to rewatch it. We'll go back and watch it. It's awesome, pumpkin smoothies were fantastic. I made it with this coconut cashew milk. It is full plant milk made with coconuts and cashews. I call it Coco Cash or Almond Cow. The company calls it Coco Cash and it's great. It tastes like whole milk. And I'm gonna use one quarter of a cup here and I'm really going to measure it out. And they say you have to place it down on a flat surface. There, okay, great. There we go, one quarter of a cup in. We've got the water, we've got the nutritional yeast, we've got the smoked paprika, the mustard powder, we've got the lemon juice, the cayenne pepper, pow, pepper the salt and the pepper. And I think we're ready to go. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna blend this up. Remember, there's soaked nuts in here, so it's, even though they're soaked, they're still gonna be nutty, so you really need to blend this nice and long. That was about 45 seconds. Um, Plant-based, you're awesome, Shay says. 
You know what, plant-based, you're awesome. Thank you, Shay. All right, I'm gonna just open up this blender and I wanna just take a quick peek. I wanna show you too, take a look. Okay, we'll do an overhead shot so you can really see the color and the consistency. Don't mind the, the sides of the blender here. Just look at the mixture on the base. See how nice and liquidy it is, right? Now I'm gonna pull some up on a spoon and I'm gonna check the nappe. This is a really fun French fancy word and it literally just means the stickiness. How much consistency or stickiness does it have? Now, Nappe is truly, we'll do an overhead so you can see, nappe really is truly meant for cream-based sauces, but it sort of works the same way um, with plant-based sauces. I can see here, it's a little too grainy, and I'm gonna show you. Can you see the little grains? The camera is trying to focus, there we go. Now I'm gonna let this go a little longer, okay? Keep it, keep it going, keep it working. Really yummy. Mm, so good. Oh, I love that. Cool. I'm cleaning as I go. Great. All right. So I want to just check this broccoli. I want to make sure it's nice and tender. Okay, I have to pull one out, I think. Let's just like talk about it for a second and look at it. Oh, come on, don't fly away. Let's look at it. Okay, it's it's hot for one. It is, it is definitely tender. Only one way to find out if it's really cooked through. It's not, it needs a little bit more time. Mm. It's nice though, very broccoli -y. Keep going broccoli, you're almost there. You're almost there. <laughs> Shay says, Smoke in the kitchen. If you can't take the heat, then get out, JK. <laughs> Thanks, Shay. I love it. Oh, the humor. We're bringing the humor today. All right, DG. I think that you should come hang out with me. All right. What do you think? I'm ready. I got some jokes. A partner in crime is coming for you. This Hi. is Danny, everyone. I'm Danny. I'm behind the scenes most of the time. Danny, did you say you have some jokes? Well, yeah, because today's cheesy soup day. <laughs> so did you, you prepare for... jokes yes wow i mean i didn't write the jokes but the internet wrote the jokes please uh, what do you get when you spell when you spill soup on a comic book i don't know superman superman nice <laughs> next one yeah okay <laughs> you guys can rate my jokes thumbs up or thumbs down okay how do you make soup rich? Ooh, this is good. You're going to like this one. I'm guessing it's not butter. No. It's not plant you're, milk. You're thinking like a chef. <laughs> okay, what is it? <laughs> you add 24 carrots. <laughs> 24 carrots. That reminds me of a song. Yeah, we'll get a little uh, Bruno Mars. Bruno this. Mars, yeah, that's what it is. Dog. 24 carrots. Come on. All right, 24 next one. carrots. Okay. In honor of uh, Our new the hair? Halloween that we oh, just okay. went through. Okay, no. <laughs> What is a ghost's favorite soup? Ooh, a ghost's favorite soup. Yes, this one's very appropriate for today. What is it? Anyone? Anyone? Scream of broccoli. Oh, that's cute, babe. There you go. <laughs> um, last joke. Okay. Are you guys done? With <laughs> you jokes have four yet? jokes prepared. Wow. <laughs> you guys, are you into this? Thumbs up. I sh Listen, Shay's into it. We're good. Last joke. <laughs> My mom, who's watching on YouTube, says daddy humor. Yes, this is where I get this from. Uh, okay. Last one. Why did the hipster burn his tongue? <laughs> I don't know. Because he ate his soup before it was cool. Before it was cool. There you go. There All right, you go. Woo! Mic drop. Boom. Just like dropping it. That was good. That was good. Joke time. All right. I'm into it. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> All right. I think this broccoli is done. How'd you like those jokes? <laughs> All right. This looks really yummy in my tummy. All right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to mix this up. The recipe doesn't call for blending it, but I am going to blend it because that's my business, as they say. So I'm gonna take some of this. Now, remember this liquid in the blender is not hot, but this soup is. So we're gonna kind of like heat it right in the blender. This is good because you don't wanna ever blend hot soup 
directly from the pan or pot into a blender. You need it to A, have some cool ingredients mixed in, like I'm doing here, blending the two, or you need to wait till it cools because you don't want your top to fly off. You don't want it to create steam and basically pop and fly off and then splatter all over your kitchen walls. That would be terrible. That has definitely happened to me, but it wasn't just any soup or like situation. It was a green smoothie and it was really messy. And I was very upset because all of my walls were stained green with a hint of yellow. So don't do that. All right, so I have this in here. This looks good and it fits. Good thing I have a big old blender. I have a little bit of liquid here that I want it captured as well. I don't want to, I don't want to miss any bit of this. Okay. I'm like getting it everywhere, but that's okay. Get sometimes get mess, messy in the kitchen. I love that I use the shredded carrots. That was such a great little time saver. All right. All right. I need my top. I'm going to blend this very carefully as carefully as I possibly can. And by doing this, I'm just gonna pulse it a few times. Oh yeah, this is looking so good. Okay, I think it's done. It just takes a few seconds, right? Because Seriously, it's like all nice and, and and tender. It's all gonna come together. I really want it to be a little bit less grainy, so let me just pulse it a few more times. Yeah, I love that. Chrissy, it's a really good question. She asks, if using a cooking blender, like I'm using, I think this is what you mean by cooking blender, like a blender, could all ingredients be added in the beginning to cook it all together? So actually, I think this is what you mean. Can you add everything to the pot and cook it and then blend it? You cannot. And here's why. You don't want to cook that plant milk. Because it's cashews, it's going to actually kind of toast up and it will, it will actually kind of like get a little grainy. And so we don't want to cook the, the nutritional yeast, cheesy cashew cheese mixture. We really just kind of want it to blend up with the rest of the ingredients. So very important to cook the vegetables, but not the cheesy sauce. So I have like a liquefy or puree button on my blender. So just run your blender for a lot longer than you probably think. And you're going to get a really nice thick and creamy soup. All right. So let me show you. I'm going to just plate it up. I think we're there, you guys. Let's do that. All right. So let me just clear my decks, put this aside. Now, here's a great opportunity for you to use plant yogurt. If you want an awesome recipe for plant-based yogurt. I have one in my cookbook, you guys. It's a must try. I always include staple recipes in the monthly cookbook because I know it's what you need. It's certainly what I needed when I went plant-based eight months ago. So I have the staple recipes include yogurt, bread, cheese. It's so great to have these staple recipes on hand and milk, of course, because you're going to use these all the time. So check out that yogurt recipe and make yourself a fresh batch of yogurt because this is where you would want to use it on top of your soups to make dips and things like that. It is really darn delicious. I don't have any yogurt right now on hand, so I'm going to go with parsley instead. That'll be my garnish for today, and it's going to be really yummy nonetheless. So let me grab my parsley and let me show you actually how I hold my parsley. Here's a really cool, fun trick. Here's how I hold it. So I take a mason jar, I fill it with water. You can see it's been in the refrigerator because it's got condensation. It's really nice and cold. And I put a little bag over it, like a Ziploc bag. I reuse these bags too. And I do that because it creates kind of like a nice um, temperate temperature underneath and it stays hydrated. Now these herbs were purchased almost 10 days ago and look how vibrant and green they are. This is actually how you wanna hold fresh cut soft herbs. So think, parsley, 
think basil, think cilantro, all of these want to be held just like fresh cut flowers. So I'm going to take my kitchen shears now and I'm just going to pull off some parsley and then I'll chop this, mince it up. I just want a little green because it's cheesy broccoli soup after all. And also we eat with our eyes. I say this all the time. We definitely eat with our eyes before we eat with our belly. And we want to do whatever we can to make it super duper delicious looking and tasting. And then nothing makes it something beg you to eat it more than a little green on your finished dish. So I'm gonna use a little fresh parsley. There we go. Yum. All right, now it's truth time. Time to enjoy this delicious cheesy broccoli soup. Just take a second, will you? Let's give this soup a little gratitude. It looks so darn yummy. I love the color. Thank you, soup. Thank you, God. Here we go. Cheers. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. It's so good. It's so cheesy. Mm, I love this so much. You have to try this recipe. Definitely, if you are in a place that's cold, or if you're not in a place that's cold, and you just want a little cheesy broccoli soup, make yourself a pot. You will not be disappointed. Enjoy this one, you guys. And if you change the recipe at all, take a photo and pop it into our Facebook group, Plant Based Made Easy. We are over 2,400 people and growing from all over the world. It's a cool community. It's a great group of people from all over that are really interested in plant-based eating and living in uh, parts of the world like Spain, the United States, Ireland, Abu Dhabi, Turkey, all over. I'm so grateful. And I also just want to quickly mention that I have a Thanksgiving class that's coming up this Sunday. If you're thinking about doing Thanksgiving a little differently this year because you've gone plant-based, or maybe you're plant-based curious or vegan curious, or maybe you're just vegetarian right now and you want to have a table without any animal products, then consider joining me for my Thanksgiving Sunday celebrate with plant-based made easy class. That's this Sunday, November 22nd at 4 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be a 90 minute class. I'm going to teach you five courses, five delicious recipes. And for joining the class, you're going to get a Thanksgiving celebrate cookbook. I'm really excited about this one because the menu is awesome, like really cool. This is the first time I've ever done a meat free Thanksgiving. So I'd love for you to join me for this so that you can use these recipes again and again. We'll pop a little link down here in the comment box. If you want to join us, please sign up. And you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.